Come, come, come on, everyone, let's celebrate. We are the children of the sun. I can see it when I look into your eyes. We are the same, and we are light, and yeah, we are one. And we can make a difference. Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. This is our 21st Century Superhuman show. Today, I'm gonna share with you about some really wonderful futuristic technologies that I've been immersed in the last few years, and many of you have heard parts and pieces of me being involved with Plasma, Ormus, Organite. And today, I'm going to do an overview of how you would implement these in your home in just the simplest way. It's not a super detailed instructional, but it's an overview instructional. So if you really want to get it together and go out and get some of this activated where you are, there's enough information here to do that. Now, this is cultivating new skills, you know, and a lot of people just say, well, where can I buy it? I don't want to do this myself. And there are really places to buy a lot of these things online. So um, once you know about it and you understand more about how it will work in your world, you might be motivated to buy some from people that are making it and support those cottage industries. Or you might be interested in making it yourself. And I'm going to give you again enough information here that you literally can go out and make these things yourself. It's just kids. It's like you got to give yourself a boot in the rear. I remember when I first started doing this and I'd be like, oh my God, I've got to go out and find pieces of copper and resin and zinc. And where do I find this? And I really don't know that much about it. But it really doesn't take that much to learn. It takes making yourself a little list and going, okay, I'm going to just go forward and do this. And as I go through this video here and show you pictures, give you a list of ideas and what to do and where to get it, I'm going to help you kind of hold your hand and say, this is where you would go to get this. This is where you'd go to get that. So I want you to join me on this path. I would just love it if every person who watches this video actually gets started, goes out and does something, says, I'm either going to buy some of this stuff or I'm going to put some of it together in my world. It's not that hard to do. And one thing I want you to notice is the clouds here behind me where we have actually put a lot of organite. We have plasma here. We have a cloud buster here. We have Ormus here. And we put organite in the laguna or the lake. And these are the kind of clouds we used to see when we were kids. You know, they're well-shaped. They're strong. They're When you think of being in a big city these days and the clouds that you see that are kind of like mush, they've been, it's where harp has been hammering. It's where these different electromagnetic systems are just jamming on mother nature and kind of cutting down mother nature's ability to do her normal purification in the atmosphere so we're gonna one of the things we'll see in this video is how to purify the atmosphere around you how to begin seeing really beautiful blue skies how to begin seeing really big poofy clouds we want to be able to avert danger create a protective field by using harmonization. I've had friends that have had to leave their houses in California because of wildfires. I've had friends that have been struggling with terrible drought in Colorado. We had been in a four month drought in, during this last year. And within a couple of days after we made Ormus, Organite, GANs, and nano-coated copper here, we went into a spell of rain that was not torrential, but the rains came and they were gentle. It would gently rain at night or it would gently rain in the morning. And what we want to remember when we're averting danger and we're creating a protective field, we're doing it with harmonization. We're doing it by harmonizing the elements. And we want to know that it is harmonization. We're not just putting up this fierce protective shield to keep us away from fear. We're literally changing the elemental system that surrounds us in a very gentle way that just invites nature to be harmonious. Doing, no matter what electromagnetic frequencies are going on, no matter what is being hammered into the environment, chemtrails, harp, that kind of thing, 
this is a way to bring balance. And I just would like to see people all over the world implementing this in their towns. Now what we do where we live, and I like to travel and do these as well, is teach little workshops and teach other people how to do this. When we, when we use these tools, we're going to activate conditions for peace in our home and community. And that peace will resonate globally. Because remember, this is where when we kick our leg in the pond like a frog or we throw a pebble, it goes out into the entire field of creation. We're gonna harmonize our weather and environment. We're gonna activate precipitation in a gentle way. Now, we've just been in a cycle this week where there's supposed to be a tropical storm, potentially a hurricane headed for us. It was coming right towards us and then it turned and went north and we've had just gentle rains and breezes. So know that you really have the power to change your environment. We also, by using these tools, we have the ability to deflect fires and to reduce or change drought into a more moist environment. And you're going to see how this works as we go through this video. I'm going to ask you to watch the video all the way through because there's tools in here that I want to hit. There's five different tools that I want you to see what each one is and get the overview. So we can also improve our health and well-being by having these tools in our environment. We can enjoy a harmonious home and we can bring abundance to all. So remember, the universe is abundant. We can set things up for that abundance to flow. So in creating a protective field, I did a video in 2018 with Tom Salas, who had built a home for his family in Dominica. And at the, the pictures on the bottom here, you see this beautiful home that he built with natural materials and there is plasma around this property. And it's also added to the materials the home was built with. Well, Hurricane Maria came through Dominica and it literally leveled the entire island. These pictures are the pictures of Tom's place that was not touched by the hurricane. The birds were coming there to get food and water. The house was all beautiful in one piece. The flower gardens were all in one piece. So when we use these tools, we create literally a protective shield that we call a plasma or a nano oasis. So if you, if you go to YouTube and you look for the title of this video, Tom Salas Plasma Hurricane Relief and Survival Oasis and making GANs from nanomaterials and junk, uh, we, Tom and I both love using the most basic things that we can find to do this work. We don't want it to have to be complicated. We want it to be anyone in the world can do it. So that video covers a lot of really nice details. You can look that up in YouTube, one of our 21st Century Superhuman shows. This is my friend Cami and I. We made GANs and that's one of our bottles of GANs a couple of years ago. We really had fun doing it. So you wanna do this with friends, teach friends how to do it. I mean, I have friends come to me and say, hey, can I get some of that GANs? Can I get some of that plasma water? And I say, yeah, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it too. So we share and we also teach. So you wanna create a home oasis with these futuristic tools. And the ones I'm gonna go through in this video are plasma, which includes GANs, plasma, including nanomaterials and nano copper health pens. And these are all basis for other plasma tools, including the free energy tools. We're going to show you how to make organite, the organite cloud buster, which is super important, and ormus. These are all various forms of nanomaterials. They have expanded molecular structures that set up fields to restore natural energy, balance, and enhance life for people, animals, and plants. The science of the future is here now. So I want you to understand the stages of nanomaterials. And this is a really nice graph put out in 2015 by the Keshe Foundation. At the bottom, we have 3D matter. And 3D matter is where the molecules are all kind of stuck together, the solid matter state. And as we know, matter is pretty much, you know, if we took all of matter and reduced it to the literal matter that's there, there wouldn't be much there anyway because we really are living in a plasmatic state. When we make nanomaterials and we use nano tools, nano means that we have expanded this molecular structure. So if you look here where it says health pens, nano copper, 
you've opened up that molecular field so plasma energy can throw flow through it and it will magnetically attract it. Ormus is in this area and then GANS is gas in a nanostate and those molecules are even more expanded. So we're gonna learn basically how all these things work. So thanks to our awesome workshop attendees in Mexico, these pictures come from a lovely workshop that we do. So Organite, we're gonna look at Organite first. Uh, doctor and psychologist Wilhelm Reich identified in the 1940s an omnipresent life energy called organ, which pervades everything. And he said this actually was related to orgasmic energy. Isn't that lovely? I would even call it plasmatic energy. So it is the energy that is streaming around us, that flows in the field, that gives us life, that holds life in form and he called it organ energy. He discovered that people would do armoring or carry stress in their muscles or reduce the ability for this life energy to flow. So he developed devices, which you can see on the left, that people could sit in in order to clear this energy and get rid of illness. He was removing the deadly organ energy. But in some of his containers, the deadly organ energy would also get stuck in there. Don Croft, in more recent times, he died in a hang glider crash in 2018. Many, the last 20 or 30 years, he discovered through Wilhelm Reich's work, how to advance the tools that Wilhelm Reich had made. And he figured out how to make it so that deadly organ energy didn't stay with the devices. And so with layers of metal shavings and crystal, with resin creates a piezoelectric effect, like the pressure of the resin compresses the metal, and if you add crystal to it, and it creates this amplified life force energy. It frees up the natural organic or orgasmic energies of the earth, which are meant to rise in spirals, and they've been suppressed by this dark matter, which is pollution, electromagnetic frequencies, harp, chemtrails, all these disturbances. When we began putting organite in our lake, we began seeing the clouds form spirals. It was amazing. And so just by putting the organite in the area of your home, you begin freeing up the earth's energy that should be purifying everything. And it wants to, that's what it wants to do. So organite is a matrix of metal particles suspended in resin. Normally the mix is 50-50 by volume also with crystals added. People make organite worldwide. They put it around their homes for protection and near cell towers to clear disruptive fields. So thanks to our friends at Organize Africa, who we I just dearly love. I initially met them when I went to South Africa to teach plasma workshops. And I met George and Frederica who came to our, my workshop and they brought me a bunch of beautiful organite. I still have some of it here. And they, they, be, they learned how to add plasma to their organite. They actually ship this organite all over the world. He, it says subscribe to our newsletters and receive 10% off your first order. You don't really click here in the video, but you can go to organizeafrica.com and their newsletters are very interesting and amazing. They're one of the pieces of email I get that I really always read. And again, you can go and look at our 21st Century Superhuman title, How to Make Organite with GANs and Cell Phone Prote Protection, and you will find a show that I did with George and Frederica. So here you can see we made, I'm not going to show you all the steps because that would be a whole nother photography project and I want to get this out to people right now. This is what we made in our workshop. So you can see this is a mold for hearts at the bottom, bigger hearts. This is a pyramid that we made, some stars. It's just so much fun. It's so creative. This is a great thing to teach kids that are old enough to learn. Kids love it. Um, you just want to teach them to be careful around the resin. Using one of those painter's ventilator face masks, they don't cost much. And it's just really a good thing to have on when you're pouring the resin 
etc. Make Organite the supplies you will need. And you might want to, you can always stop the video. You might want to make yourself a little list or go back through and do it on the second time through. Silicon molds and silicon molds, including pyramids, can be ordered online. We also find molds at local dollar stores that are commonly made for chocolates or baked goods, little hearts and animals and bugs and all kinds of fun things. So I encourage you to start noticing if you can find those around your area. Number two is resin and hardener. And usually these are found in some kind of an industrial place. They also have them at like Michael's arts and crafts type of stores. We get ours bulk. Uh, they actually pour it into a big old two liter Coke bottle with a couple of little bottles of of hardener that go with it and where they repair surfboards, boats, or industrial supplies is where you will get resin. We usually use the cheapest one, which is kind of cloudy, although people tend to use the clear one that is probably what you'd get at Michael's more for jewelry and that kind of thing. But you can use either one for making organite. It depends on if you're making your pieces for durability to go out in yard and garden or whether you're making beautiful things, you know, a coaster to go under a cup, or a piece that you want to wear. So we just make simple organite pieces for garden, yard, and gifting to cell towers. And then number three, crushed or small pieces of crystal precious stones. A lot of times we have friends pick up what they sweep up off the floor or whatever at gem and mineral shows. Also, it's nice to have a few larger crystals and add those to what you're doing. And you can also order bags of small pieces online. Number four is metal filings. Aluminum is what is primarily suggested. And I always have people, you know, say, oh, well, do you really want to use aluminum? And do you really want to use resin? A lot of people have tried, for instance, plant-based resin, but it doesn't really create the piezoelectric effect or hold up quite as well. And, and the same thing with the metal filings. Aluminum is suggested as the base, although you can also go to a machine shop and get brass and copper filings that come off of machining. The aluminum, we go to a shop where they cut the frames for windows. And when they do that, there's just piles of stuff on the floor. We get them to put it in a bag for us. We give them a little tip and say, thank you. And we bring it home and we use it in our organite. And sometimes we sift it and take the smaller filings out and use those separately from the big filings. If for additional plasmatic elements, if you can get a hold of the real copper scrubbers that are for scrubbing pans and nano coat that, we're going to learn about nano coating in just a few minutes here, and cut it into small pieces to add in that you're, you'll be amplifying this energy even more. Number five, a plastic measuring cup that you could throw away if you wanted to, and a paddle or stick. I just use a stick from outside that's clean, or you could use a wooden paddle for mixing the resin. And you're gonna to wanna to mix it really, really well. Protective rubber gloves, eye covering, and a respirator mask like painters use. This is important, this stuff is pretty toxic when you're working with it. We always work with it outdoors. So do your own research, watch videos. You can look up Don Croft, or just look up Making Organite on YouTube, and you'll find many, many videos and get your questions answered. We're gonna look at some things here and you'll have a good feel for it by the time we're done. So optional addition, we like taking our plasmatic water or GANS and we just soak paper towels in it and put it to dry, hang it out on the line to dry out in the sunshine or a sunny window, and then cut it into tiny pieces to add to the organite. You can also dry out your GANS, but that takes a lot of work and you use up a lot of GANS doing it that way. So I prefer just dipping a paper towel in, letting it dry, snipping it up, and putting pieces of that into Organite. So how to make Organite. There are many great, as I said before, many great videos online thanks to a growing Organite community worldwide. You can set up, set up an outdoor work area to minimize exposure to resin fumes. When you're ready, wear your protective gear and mask and gloves and thoroughly mix the correct amounts of resin and hardener. I always use a little extra hardener and my resin hardens a little faster, but you have to play with it and kind of get used to it. Our first few times of making Organite were, um, you know, you're trying everything, you're trying to get it to work right. And we made a few messes, but eventually it starts really falling into place and becoming easy. And 
one day you can say, hey, I'm going to go out and make some organite and it just takes an hour and it's done. So depending on your design and the silicone mold size, you may want to pour a little resin in first. That's optional, but in some of our smaller size molds, we like pouring a little resin in there first and it ends up giving us a really nice top. Otherwise, we used to have to redo them, pour some resin in there the next morning and set the piece back in the mold in order to get a good a good finish on it. You can layer crushed or small pieces of crystal and semi-precious stones on the bottom of your mold for a pretty finish if you want something that's going to sit around your house. Or if you're just making dirty hairies, you can just use the aluminum shavings. And we'll learn in a minute what the dirty hairies are. And so after the crystal you put or stones, you put a layer of aluminum shavings or other metals used, put another layer of crystal or stone pieces after that, and just keep pouring a little more resin in each time, making sure it settles well. And when you're using a bigger mold, like a pyramid, you wanna be sure to make nice layers with resin. You can possibly let it harden a little bit in between, and then you'll keep putting various colors and that kind of thing, colors of stone, you get everything poured, pour the resin up to the top and make sure that it settles well. And when using, I have in here, pour resin over the top. That's not right. It should just be pour more resin over the top of what you have in there, but up to the top of your mold. Make sure it settles well. Allow to harden overnight and remove from the molds. And it will need more hardening time outside, maybe a few days. And then you can share it with your friends place it in your home, garden, around cell towers, power boxes, etc. Coasters can also be made to clear and potentize water and food. Again, these are just beautiful. They're fun to make. To, to get the pretty ones with these stones in the bottom, you're going to put your some little um, precious stone residue in the bottom, crystals if you want, and then pour a little resin and then put your aluminum shavings and then pour some more resin and that's about all you can do in these these smaller containers that they they fill up pretty fast but you can end up with some really beautiful pieces of organite and people always love the hearts they love sharing them with their friends so be a tower buster don croft popularized dirty harry's which we like to call clean harriets and they're made in a muffin tin size silicone mold in order to gift. And they're just a simple, basic organite. They're not fancy. And um, we actually track our organite on Google Maps and we gift it to cell towers. We give it to friends to take to other countries or take to wherever they're traveling to to drop off. And we also put it in key locations around our area. Um, we've put it all up and down our Laguna. And we want to invite you to join this worldwide movement to free up Earth's natural energy and make our lives more whole, healthy, and beautiful. The placement of one or a few small organites transforms a cell phone tower from a death force emitter to a veritable organ generator while the presence of an organite cloud buster opens up the sky and dissolves chemtrails. You want to see blue skies like I have behind me and poofy clouds wherever you live. And you can create that by starting to use putting, all, all it takes is one tower buster in an area. These will really go out pretty far. By strengthening the self-healing capacity of the biophysical system of air, the poisonous soup is transmuted into harmless components. We just have a very small one here. And as I said, it's really changed our weather. It's, brought, it's taken us from deep, deep drought where the ground was just parched and everything was dry and you thought a fire would start any day to gentle rains, just gentle, beautiful, light rains, sometimes in the morning, sometimes at night. And I say that is Edenic. It is like Eden. It is like before the earth was out of balance. So here's some stars that we made at the workshop and some hearts. And we do this out. There's like an old um, barbecue that was here when we got here that we don't use that we just, we use that as our place that we make our organite in. So you can just set up an area to do this outside. Put all kinds of really pretty things in there. You can see the aluminum filings. You can see different shells and 
gems. That cute as a bug in a rug, cute little bug silicone molds and a little flower. So the kind of things that kids might find fun um, if you want to teach them how to do this. And also it's really nice to put triskelions or which is a triple copper spiral. This is just one, a single copper spiral somebody made and put in here. You can also wrap copper around crystals. And I like to either, I like to also nano coat copper before I put it in my organite, which again, takes it up another level. So here we have the little spirals, the little copper spirals and some really nice organite. And those are about ready to be popped out of, they come out of the silicone molds really easily. We used to do them in metal containers. We did them in metal muffin tins and that lasted, we could get the organite out of there for about three times. And then we just could never get it out anymore. We finally, finally gave up and learned that silicone was the way to go. One of the things I like to do with the tools that I'm making is put them over water in the freezer and see if they create a field. So here's a lovely field created in just a cup of water that froze into ice created by this star. And I did the same thing with a heart. It ended up with a really nice big heart-shaped field in it. So this is, gives you feedback on how what you made is working. We love to do that. And I encourage you to do that. Send me pictures, the things that you make and the things that you freeze to show, to demonstrate what you're doing. So this is the wonderful Don Croft, who is the modern day leader of really a lot of our knowledge about Organite. And he did an amazing lot of work to take this science forward. He and his wife, the Cloudbusters, are a, a bigger and a more sophisticated Organite. Cloudbusters have been used to get rid of chemtrails, bring rain, restore and reharmonize the balance of nature. The Cloudbuster movement has become a lively and fast growing community as the positive effects can be experienced hands on. Only a few westernized people can see settled energies, but all can see chemtrails disappear, dry regions experience new, nice, gentle rainfall patterns, and plants put on a whole new freshness. So this on the right is a little map, how to build a Don Croft Organite Cloudbuster. And you can get some ideas from this. You can also order these at their website, which is ctbusters.com. And he, the, he and his, his wife has a bunch of products there, which are really great. It's obviously cheaper to make your own. It just depends on what situation you're in. So Don Croft said, Organite disables humanity's enemy, the occult corporate world order in ways that have to be witnessed to be believed, which is why we stress doing the work rather than relying on argument or persuasion to get people's support. Strong positive effects have been observed up to 150 kilometers after placing a cloudbuster. This is not for active weather manipulation. It simply creates a positive organ field, frees up those natural spirals of Mother Earth, and it stimulates climatic, biological, and mental improvements. So again, you can see Don and Carolyn Croft's really great developments at ctbusters.com. So these are just some examples of Cloudbusters. You can get a little idea of what they should look like. And we're going to show you the simple one that we made here with our workshop. Aren't those beautiful? This is a tall Cloudbuster, a six foot tall Cloudbuster. You don't have to make one that tall. It depends on how serious the conditions you're looking at in your area. This is a Cloudbuster made in a plastic two or five gallon bucket. Remember, when you make them this big, it's gonna take a lot of resin. So you wanna make sure you can get the resin. Um, this is a smaller one, and this has wound copper around the top. And this is another smaller one. I'm not sure what these are. So I also wanna thank Mike Emery and the Bubble Tech Facebook group for application ideas. It's the reason that I decided to use a clay flower pot with mine. And so this was really simple. We had five people gathered around and we started out with this clay pot. We happened to have three pieces, three eighths inch or half inch cop copper pipe and they're only a foot long or so. That was what we happened to have here. And so we just decided to go ahead and make a cloud buster out of that. So we started with the plain clay pot and, or you could use a 
plastic bucket. Remember, if you're using a clay flower pot, put rocks in the bottom so that your resin doesn't pour out the bottom. You're gonna layer it in as if you're making organite. So it's nice on the bottom, you can put crystals that point the four directions, or you could put a crystal that points down, or you can put a big crystal in the middle that points up. And then you're gonna put a layer of aluminum or metal shavings, and you're gonna layer your stone or crystal, and you're gonna start pouring first before you start. And then you just mix your resin with hardener and start pouring it in there. So you're gonna layer the aluminum shavings, the stone, the crystal. And when I say stone, I mean little bits of precious stone that you may have around. And remember, as you make these things, you're gonna put loving thought around it. I now see nature harmonizing. I now breathe, smile, and love. I now clear myself, my family, my home, my region of that dark organ energy. And we invite spirals of Mother Earth to move again and to clear the air naturally and create a better environment for all of us to live in. And you're gonna keep pouring the resin in until the pot is full. As you build the layers, you can also put a crystal pointing up at the center. If you want to, you can put it in a piece of garden hose. We just put it in the, in the resin. We did it the simplest way possible. You can also set crystals in the copper tubes. You can put an end cap on the bottom or an end cap on the top if you want to. We didn't do that with ours. We just left the copper tubes open and it's been really powerful just in the simplest form. So as you layer the metal shavings and crystal, you can also add spiraled copper pieces that are nano coated or plain, all different ways that you can make this more of a powerful piezoelectric base that's gonna start just freeing up the beautiful electrical magnetic energy of the earth. We had a lot of people there, so everybody just held their hands and we held the pipes until it hardened a little bit. You could also use sticks or rocks or any kind of spacer to hold the pipe straight until, until it gets hard enough to set on its own. So once it's hard, you can remove the pot if you like, or you can keep the pot there. You'd have to kind of break it off. You can place it in a nice location in your yard. The one we have just works really well. We have it out in a thick garden area, so it's not really visible to anybody. In Kenya, our friends hid them so that they wouldn't be stolen. And so you just want to be careful. Are you in a location where nobody's going to bother it or you in a location where somebody might bother it. So just think about that. And how do you put one into a beautiful garden area? You could call it a sculpture and it'll put out its beautiful rebalancing energy there. And again, remember, give it your best thoughts of love as these tools will resonate what you put in them and they will surround you with it. So at our workshop, we had a wonderful, healthy potluck lunch. We'll just share some pictures with you. We have some more devices and tools to look at, but in case you're getting hungry, we had veggie and rice and beans, skillet, garbanzos, chips, hummus, soup, cucumbers. Just, it's always fun to gather people and gather food, and everybody had so much fun on this day. They're still talking about it. The next item we want to go into are health pens. Health pens are a plasma tool developed by Mehran Tikesh and many knowledge seekers. When they're held at a location on the body, they literally will help energy move in order for pain to be relieved. That's why we call them health pens. Fun just to have in your house, in your area where you are. I'm getting currents going through me just holding them in my hands. So the health plans are a, pl a plasma tool. They are basically made from copper wire and then they are given a nano coating with heat or caustic which expands the molecular structure with up to 45,000 layers of nanoparticles of copper. We prefer the caustic method as we feel it lasts longer and is more durable, although fire and torch work just as well, and of course, fire is ancient. And caustic is really made from ash, so again, that's another element of fire. Once they are nano-coated and rinsed with clean water, we usually coat the health pens with coconut oil to protect them from body oils, you can use resin or plastic or a wood container. As you can see in the picture on the right, again, 
a cup of water was frozen under the health pen. And look at that incredible apple-shaped torus field that forms underneath it. That torus field tells us that this health pen is organizing and directing the plasma energy that, we, that we're surrounded with and it's putting it out it's pulling it through itself and putting it out isn't that amazing that's just such a beautiful picture so i want again let's look at the stages of nanomaterials just to remind you we have 3d matter which is very dense the health pens are nano coated copper and they we've opened up the molecular structure so the plasma can flow through them it's an important thing to remember. So you want to create a flowing design that you like at the top of the pen, and you can use smooth needle nose pliers, and you can wind the same direction as is in this picture, which if you were pointing this towards you, pointing the point towards you, you would wind in a counterclockwise direction. At the bottom, the tip of the core post should be slightly longer than the coiled wire. The longer the tip, the more like a laser the energy coming off the bottom will be. And the, those are, these are a couple of the pens that I'm just holding in my hand here. We have them in our home. You can, they're around all the time. How to make a basic health pen. You use bare, clean 14 to 18 gauge copper wire purchased at a hardware store or taken out of old power cords. You can just strip, so if you have, know somebody who's a builder, they're gonna have scraps of wire around and you can just strip the plastic sheathing off of it and then you've got really nice, clean, bare copper wire. And you wanna cut a piece of the wire to either one length or two lengths of what's called a cubit, and it's the length from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger. This is sacred geometry, and we like using that measurement because it harmonizes with our body. So it depends on how big the person is, how big you want the pen is, if you want to use a double length or a single length. Um, usually it would just enough from the elbow to the tips of the finger should be enough to make one of these really basic pens that are that I'm showing you here. You'll see more complicated ones that will require more and that would be multiple qubits. But there are many ways to make these. This is a basic formula. Working with the nano-coated copper coils also gives some understanding as to how some aspects of our new free energy devices will work. You're gonna nano-coat when your health pen creation is completed. And remember when you're nano-coating, you're gonna use vinegar to wash caustic off your hands or implements. You want to use this opportunity to, to nano-coat extra pieces and coils of copper to use in the GANS making. So we have a caustic method, which is 100% lye, either sodium hydroxide and or potassium hydroxide, which is what I usually find in Central American countries. Some, the people who do this a lot like to, it's really nice to mix potassium and sodium hydroxide. If you have them both available, they make a really nice, strong nano coating. And you're gonna use protective hand and eyewear, that same breathing mask that you would use for painting that you would use for the, the organite is really good to use on this gloves. So you're going to put your copper health pen with a teaspoon of lye in a big double Ziploc bag or a durable heat proof non-metal container. So some kind of a plastic container is best. And I have seen people use um, like a glass Pyrex dish also. So you're going to add an eighth to a quarter cup of water and it will get hot. That lye will get really hot. So be careful about holding on to your container. Allow the copper to soak in the lye water for a few minutes to clean off oils or any coating. Then set the closed bag or container in a place safe from animals, kids, or anyone touching it. Set the container in such a way that the health pen or any copper item to be nano-coated does not sit in the liquid, but stays moist with caustic. So you wanna let it sit in a warm area for about three days, either sunshine or a heat register. And each day wearing gloves, you wanna move the container to moisten the copper with the caustic liquid, but do not let it sit in a puddle. Once a nice black coating has formed, you wanna remove from the container and rinse with clean water. When it's rinsed and dried, you can coat it with coconut oil or use another kind of container, which we'll see here. So here's people making their pens. 
with the needle nose pliers. They've already cut their wire and each one is doing their own creative process here. They're all really adorable and creative and cute and fun and beautiful. Each one is different and unique and just amazingly wonderful. And this is what they look like when they're nano coated. Aren't those beautiful? Just a beautiful 45,000 layers of copper of nanoparticles thick. And this is after sitting about three days in the sun, getting repeatedly moistened, we moisten it once or twice a day with the caustic water and then let it sit um, so that it's not sitting in the water. And these are some really beautiful pieces. It's always nice to make some extra things when you're nano coating, coat some extra pieces of copper so that you can use them in some of these other projects that we're going to do. So now we're going to learn how to make GANs. And when we make GANs, we need copper, nano coated copper coils. So you can do an 18 turn nano coated copper coil to use in your GANs when you make your health pens. So it's good to kind of make these things sequentially. Although we did it all in one day, I have things prepared ahead of time. Some things are nano coated ahead of time. Some GANs is made ahead of time. So GANs is gas in a nano state. It is a liquid plasma. And it has many benefits around the home and garden. On the left end here is food GANs. This is iron CH3 GANs, the red one copper CUO GANs, zinc GANs is very white, excuse me, CO2 GANs is kind of creamy colored, zinc GANs is very white, and then Ormus or seawater GANs is on the right hand end here. So again, let's look at our understanding the stages of nanomaterials. Again, 3D matter, that's what we're used to, the table, the chair, knock on wood. Um, but once we turn these materials into nanomaterials, the, the molecules have spread very far apart so they can transmit fields and plasmatic energy. This is why we do this. So this is some of our really beautiful plasma water frozen. It has never had GANs in it. It has only had GANs next to it and the GANs next to it has created this amazing field that when it freezes, it creates this beautiful, life-giving, generating torus field. Amazing, just amazing. And this is sunlight through GANs that we made in the early days. And look at that cone of light down the middle of it. You can see the field amplification that creates something like this cone of light coming in. So instead of laundry detergent, I use plasma water because it has magnetic effects and it will literally pull the dirt out of your clothes. And I use essential oils with it, peppermint and rosemary, or what I use, just a few drops. And it gets, your, gets our clothes amazingly clean. And then of course they dry out in the air and sunshine. I have a Facebook group called Plasma at Home. I haven't done a ton with it yet, but it should be developing more as we go along here. So supplies for GANs making. And you may wanna watch this in segments, but I'd like you to kind of watch it all the way through, get an idea of how these things work, and then come back and use the video to coach you through a session of creating one of these items. So supplies for GANs making, you need durable containers to make the GANs in, approximately one quart, plastic or glass, okay. I just use large old two liter Coke bottles that are cut off because I'm in Mexico or Central America and I like to use trash and we like to show people that they can do it without having to go out and buy things. Z and then we need a piece of zinc, like a two by two piece of zinc per GANS making jar. The best thing is this zinc shield, zinc roof flashing. It's really wonderful and it's a great thing to use. Um, if you can find other pieces of zinc, this zinc actually is coated and it usually will come off after a few times of making GANs and so you have to keep using new pieces of it. But I found this one of the best ways to get it. Um, a 
a flat piece of copper and a three inch copper coil. So you could make a few copper coils. You could wind them around a knitting needle, around a pen and make them 18 turns long and nano coat them when you nano coat your health pens. Um, 14 gauge wire is good for the copper coil, but any size will work. Any size of random copper pieces can be used for this GANS making process. So it's nice to have if you're going to make the one cup of life, you need a flat piece of copper and then a few copper coils are nice to have. So I always nano coat these pieces of copper when I'm making health pens, like try and do everything all at once. And you need at least three days for the nano coating to take and to set and to get washed and dry. And so you wanna do that ahead of time. Um, these little LED lights on the right are really nice. They act as kind of a capacitor. So if you can get your hands on those, uh, most hardware stores have them or electronic shops and the best ones are green and then red. So if you can get your hands on those, it's great. Three or four spare pieces of wire they can be six to eight inches long. You, some situations you can use wire that has the plastic still on it. Um, these would be copper wire though. So you can also use bare copper wire. One cup or so of any kind of salt. I like using sea salt or Himalayan salt. You need bottles with lids to put it in when you're done and tape and a marker. And you want to be sure to set intentions of love. And here's our happy, beautiful participants setting intentions of love for the GANs. Yes. So you're going to make a container with a 10 to 15% salt water solution. I just make it the night before. I make it to taste like seawater. And you can use a little warm water so the salt dissolves well. And this will be for making your GANs or plasma. And remember to have fun. This is kind of our, our workstation here. So you're gonna set up a durable container with the 10 to 15% salt water solution. And here we're using old Coke bottles or any other durable plastic container. Here is a nano coated copper coil. It doesn't have to be pretty. It gives us the nano coated copper to put into our GANs. So this is how you set up a GANs making process. Um, a zinc plate on one side and you can just cut a little slit in it so you can hook it to the container with this copper wire that goes across and then I, I like to stick a hole in the container and then a nano coated copper coil on the other side and this wire that's running across the top does not touch the water just your nano coated copper and your zinc plate go into the water and here we can clip two wires for a battery that's almost worn out um, or an old low voltage phone charger. Um, you can cut the wires off of it um, and hook them to these clips or just hook them to the wires and then plug that in. And we'll be running a really low current through the salt water to get the GANS process to happen a little more quickly. This is our beautiful GANS making process going on. Everybody got together and worked to put it together. One of these bottles is the One Cup of Life, and one is a regular CO2 GANS making process, and one is zinc. Well, here we have a bunch of nano-coated copper pieces. Here is a copper coil that is not nano-coated. Here's a flat piece of copper. So everybody is working on putting these things together. They're working together on them. That's really fun. And the best way to do it, the best way to figure out is do it. You know, you can go, oh, I don't know how to do that. How am I gonna do it? But it's not that difficult. It's just a matter. And this is our water station in the background. And we have a lot of bottles of different kinds of plasmas here. Here we've got copper, not nano-coated copper and a nano-coated copper. So this is the one cup of life setup. And this is some of the GANs making process once that it has gotten going. And here's some GANs again that are completely made. This is the one cup of GANs. And again, there is a 21st Century Superhuman YouTube video on making the one cup of life at home with Nikolai for a protective oasis. This is what that setup looks like. It's really nicely put together, a little better than my casual one.
in the teaching setting. This is a special CO2 and copper GANS designed to protect from coronavirus. And you can learn more at thecashfoundation.org. And this is a battery that is mostly discharged, plastic coated copper wire, a zinc plate, a plain copper coil, plain copper wire, and a nano coated copper coil. And so it shows you really well how to put that together. So if you want to make one GANS, this would be a really great GANS to make. And there's a really good diagram to show you how to do it. You can always screenshot this, come back to this page, take screenshots and have your notes. Okay, we're going to go on to another futuristic tool that we can use, which is Ormus. And you can see a video on this at my 21st Century Superhuman YouTube channel. The name of the video is Ormus Alchemy with Dave Kane. Ormus has been known since ancient times and embraces alchemy useful for many areas of life. It is a method for turning the elements of seawater into nanomaterials, which amplifies their fields. It is very similar to seawater GANs. There are many ways to use and make Ormus. We share here the basic recipe that has worked for us that we learned from our friend Dave Kane, who makes and sells Ormus. After five years of taking one teaspoon of Ormus per day, he had five times the stem cells of the average person and doctors asked if they could use some of his blood for research. Pretty cool. And you can learn more about Ormus at Chris Emmons Ormus Academy. Chris Emmons is one of the people that has a book out on this and teaches a lot about it. And she's pretty cool. Ormus, step one, you're gonna dissolve two cups of plain dead sea salt without scent in one gallon glass jar of good spring water. And this, this gallon jug here, you're not gonna have it quite full of spring water because you're gonna have to add the lye to it. So it should be two cups short of full. You can order dead sea salt online. If you didn't, weren't able to get dead sea salt, I would use plain sea salt or plain Himalayan salt. It won't have quite as potent of minerals, but it'll still be good. And then for step two, you're gonna, again, wear your rubber gloves and your safety glasses and your breathing mask that would be for painting. Yep. And take four teaspoons of sodium hydroxide or 100% lye from the hardware store, or you can get food grade lye from Amazon. You don't want to consume it. To find 100% lye at Ace Hardware, you may need to ask and say you are making soap. They may keep it behind the counter, but a lot of times that old fashioned plumber stuff, it usually comes in a white can and it says 100% lye on it. So you're going to mix the lye with a stainless steel spoon into two cups of distilled water until dissolved. So the lye mix will cloud, first of all, when you put it in your water, and then it will clear in a few minutes. When it clears, you're ready. And so while you're wearing your safety glasses and your rubber gloves and your painter's mask, you're going to go outside and because it will gas out. And so now with your protective gear on, you're slowly going to add the lye and you're going to mix in a rotating motion with a plastic or wooden spoon. Okay. And you're going to slowly be pouring the lye and you're going to pour it in slowly because you don't want to burn those minerals and you preserve the best ormic qualities and you're going to stir it slowly. If you have a pH meter and you can test it, as you go along, you want to test to 10.7. That's like the perfect Ormus and you're done and you've added enough of the caustic at that point. I've only used a pH meter once because a lot of times I'm places when I'm making it that I don't have one with me. So I kind of do it by observation having made it before. And that's what, you'll have a cloudy jar and it will start to settle. And so you want to let the Orma settle for six to 10 hours. And this is what it looks like after you let it settle. And for step four, once the Ormus is well settled, you're going to either pour the clear water off the top or use a turkey baster or use a clear plastic tube and siphon it. You want to make sure you don't get the caustic really in your mouth. Be careful not to remove the white Ormus part. You want to just drain the caustic water off, pour it in gravel or somewhere where animals can't get at it, pour down a pipe that needs cleaning. Then you refill the jar with fresh good water. You wanna repeat this process every six or eight hours or so when the water is clear when it's settled for two to three days. And after it's settled and it's clear, a finger dipped in the water should taste sweet, not salty, and then it's ready to use. 
and you can shake it up and divide it into smaller jars. We did that in our workshop and sent a jar home with everyone. So, so each person gets a jar with the white Ormus in it. So how to use Ormus? It's basically an Ormic plasma nano material. Many Ormus aficionados take one to two, two teaspoons per day of the white part with the clear water poured off. They keep the white Ormus in a dark colored jar and out of the light. And this is a really potent, beautiful, mineral rich nanomaterial. For us, because of all our work with GANs and what we've learned with it, rather than taking the white material directly, we like to save it. We shake it up after it's rinsed for three days and it's sweet. We divide it into smaller jars and when they're settled, each have some of the white material and some have some of the water and we label it as Ormus or seawater GANs and we take one or two tablespoons of the clear water off the top if we're gonna take some of it internally. We also set it near food or water to potentize it just through the fields. And we keep the white part in the jar as a mother and we always refill that jar with clean water. We use some of it in our laundry, we use some of it to water plants, of just the clear water off the top of the jar because that's all gonna be potentized with these fields as we know from doing our ice experiments. Um, we can set a jar of this in the garden or use the clear water on plants. I remember Dave Kane's wife telling about a tree that was dying and she went out and just poured a full bottle of Ormus at the roots and the tree just came back to life and was super well. So you can read more online about how to use Orma. And Ormus is a really powerful substance. I'd like you to use this video figure out how to get the supplies and start making some of these things and start setting up your home oasis as a plasmatic field, as an amplified plasmatic field with protective energy, with a protective shield around it. And you can start setting waves of peacefulness and harmony out into the entire community around you. I'd like to see somebody in every town in every country have a cloud buster, even if it's a small one in their garden. This will really start freeing up the earth's energies. And when the earth's energies are freed up to clear itself, it also helps clear us. It helps us be more mentally free and balanced and happy. Say thank you all so much for joining me. If you have questions, you can write them under my video on YouTube. Let me know what you need to know about how to be able to do this, but please put together the supplies in your own life and go out and try these little science experiments. Teach your kids, play with it, have fun, start getting rid of drought, call in gentle rains to create peace and harmony in your community and be part of the change we wish to see. Okay, you guys, this is science of the future. It is here now. Remember, breathe, smile, and love, and be a 21st century superhuman. This is how we change ourselves to change the world. Empower your life as a 21st century superhuman with host Carrie Kiristar Ellis and guests. Navigate these times of great change with Carrie's 21st century superhuman book series, being called the most important books on the planet and guidebooks for our times. You are a creator. Remember to breathe, smile, and love. For as we change ourselves, we change the world. Learn more at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com.